Hello, my name is Sue Grant and today we're having a look at the Discovery 55 Tikatibu uh, lying in Slano in Croatia. Beautiful, beautiful spot. We're going to start in the centre cockpit. This video has been shot for us by the owners and it is very detailed, so it isn't short, but please do stick with us because it really does give a very clear idea of this great yacht. She's from 2009. They had her built in Marchwood in Southampton and they have used her extensively. They did the Caribbean circuit here we're looking at this table with a fridge or other ice box and the discovery glass holders on the top. After the North Atlantic circuit, they brought her back into the Mediterranean and have had a fantastic time cruising with her eight weeks in the spring and eight weeks in the late summer and she's been fantastic as a two-person magic carpet. Great cockpit on the Discovery, very good ergonomics, and what I particularly like about Tickety Boo is that the rig is anodized, so the section doesn't need repainting. Full med setup, of course, Bimini. And here on the aft deck, We've got uh, passerelle, davits, safety gear, gin and tonic seats, and she's also got this arch with solar panels. That's 600 watts and really means that they can deal with her power needs during a normal day. Generator is normally used at the end of the day just for a final charge before bedtime. This bar is really useful because you can use it for getting the outboard on board and so on. There is her tender. It's an Avon 3.1 and she's got a 9.8 horsepower Tohatsu. Right, now we're on the foredeck. And she's got a Lumar vertical windlass, Rockner anchor, Ford Lazarette, Dolphin seats, Furling, normal Solent rig. She's got Hood Vectran sails, so you're looking at the Genoa and Staysail. As with all Discoveries, she's got a self-tacking jib, very easy to handle with just two people aboard. Whisker pole stowed on the mast. She's just had a wash. Decks are looking lovely and she's got solar on the coach roof. So there's 20 watts for the engine and gen and a further 300 watts for the house bank. These panels are semi-flexible, easy to work with. Looking up at this lovely anodized spar, electric furling for the mainsail, of course. All the lines for the furling at the front are led through into the cockpit and there's an electric utility winch so that that is all powered as well. Look at the boarding gates both sides. We're just going over the gas locker and then there's another storage locker behind it. Now let's just jump into the owner's cabin. The interior woodwork is all in cherry wood. Looks absolutely lovely. She's got fans throughout the yacht. She's got reverse cycle airco in the owner's cabin and also in the main saloon. Patina is absolutely lovely. She's also got central heating. You can see the control there. Masses and masses of storage in this cabin. 
There's a big wardrobe that we're just looking at there. Dressing table. And on this yacht to starboard, you've got a nice sofa that you can sit and read a book or do whatever. Lots of light and ventilation. The mattress is split and she's got lee cloths, so it's the perfect place for when you're on passage. You can be as snug as a bug in here. And then obviously you go through the linear galley to get to the main saloon. Everything is clipped so that nothing goes awry. If you just look, we have a view of the galley and you can see you've got a microwave. There's a larder, force 10 cooker, huge refrigeration, double sink and also a drainer and loads and loads of storage in that galley, which is great. Opening port there and there's also a port aft. There are two bucket lockers from the deck. But apart from that, you go right back to the transom on this boat, which just makes for a light, spacious and airy place to be. All in great condition. There's storage to the side and under floor and underneath the double berth. There really is an extraordinary amount of space for you to keep things, which is great when you're long term cruising and you want to keep a wardrobe on the yacht and not carry everything backwards and forwards. En suite heads, obviously, to your left. We'll have a look at the en suite properly shortly. And here we are. Electric Lou by Tecmar, same thing in the heads compartment forward. Corian work surface, looks very smart. Everything is spotlessly clean and in great condition. Electric towel rail. This is great because not only does it keep the towels dry, you can switch it on and off at this position, but it also makes sure that if you put it on that the heads compartment is toasty warm if you want to take a shower. And there we are, door shut. opening port and hatch as well, which is great. She's got black tanks forward and aft. And again, this clips open and shut. The access to the engine room is also via this ensuite heads compartment. And you also have access to the washer dryer here. Lovely shower compartment, quite large. You've also got natural ventilation access panel there. And now we're going to shut ourselves in. Also got a seat, which is always handy. And then we just have a look. It's a Siemens washer dryer. Full size, so you can do proper loads with it.
and then to the left of that is access into the engine space. The generator is further forward and it is accessed from the main saloon. Very, very good access and that is a 7 kilowatt genset. It's Onan. Now here we're looking at the Yanmar main engine. It's 160 horsepower. It's a 4LHA HTP. And behind it is the water maker, which has an upgraded capacity and makes 140 litres an hour. It's got an aqua drive. And the controls for the winches are seen on the port bulkhead. Very good insulation on these yachts, they took a lot of trouble with it and actually when you're on deck you just have to look at the rev canter to actually see whether the engine is running or not. And there's no exhaust outlet above the waterline so it's completely silent. Everything's well marked. And Discoveries have a manifold, which means that they have a reduced number of seacocks, which is very good for security and safety when you're going blue water. The engine has run under 3,000 hours, and she has a gory prop, max power bow thruster. You see the manifold there. And Raycor oversized fuel filters which is very much needed if you're going a long way and uh, you're not sure of the fuel you're taking on board. Firefighting and her Victron inverted charger is also on this bulkhead. It's a Phoenix, nice installation. This is a very nice area, very easy to work and everything is just there and it's not all jumbled up. Checker plate flooring. Nice clean bilge beneath the engine. And look at that. Nice clean oil. All very good indeed. Shut the door. Now the saloon is next. We're just coming up from big refrigeration and freezer space into the main saloon, which is raised so that you have perfect vision from the windows. Really good ventilation from overhead hatches. Lovely marquetry compass rose on the main saloon table and that all retracts and becomes smaller uh, coffee table size as you wish. What's really nice is there are just the three steps down into the main saloon and everywhere on this yacht there are handholds so you never fall, you never feel insecure. It's a really great yacht to be on board when you're at sea. And of course you have interior watch keeping, lovely chart table area. We'll have a look and you can see how good the vision is a bit later on. 
And now we're having demonstrated the discovery hatch, which just slides away. It has about three positions so that you can have it partially up or all the way up. Then you can actually just let it come down. There's a bit of resistance, so it's there it is. And then it's clipped and that's done. And then up into this seating area. If you can see, when you're at sea, you do have really good vision. She's running on Raymarine. She's got Navtech 6. She's got SSB. Pactor modem. She's well set up. The floors are laminate. And then we're coming down and here is a passage berth. This is from Mark 1, so when you're not on watch, you're very close to what's going on. And then we're going to have a look at the Ford accommodation shortly. The control panel, very, very, very easy to understand. Excellent. Now it's time to have a look in the forward cabin area. To your left is access to the mast. The boat is keel-stepped. Upper and lower berth cabin. This is actually very generous. It has a wardrobe front and back. And there's also storage beneath the bottom bunk. very light, bright and airy, and these two berths are quite wide. So it's a great place if you have people on board that are actually going to be on board with you for some time. These owners tend to sail two-handed, but they do have a load of guests every so often, and this arrangement has worked really well for them. You see the figuring in the cherry, it is lovely, beautifully done. All of the hatches have blackouts and also fly screens. All of the lighting is LED. All of the berths um, have lee cloths. And then this is the Ford guest head, also the day head. Enormous shower stall, which is separated. Again, all spotlessly clean. Corian surface, another electric loo, another electric towel rail. Very generous in size. Discovery didn't try and get too much into these yachts. There we go, there's the towel rail. Take my loo. Very easy to keep clean. And then here is the VIP cabin, the double forward cabin. You've got storage beneath the bed. Lots of natural light. Wardrobes, beveled mirrors. Really nice place for guests to spend time. And you've also got this little shelf, port and starboard.
fans are going. I think it's quite a hot day in uh, Croatia. Lovely joinery. Absolutely great guest cabin. So I very much hope that you've enjoyed your look around the Discovery 55 Tickety Boo and uh, you'll let us know if you'd like to know more about her. She is lovely. <laughs>